Hello everyone and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video we'll talk about management of open bite. Firstly we'll start briefly with what is open bite. We have covered previously what is open bite and I'll mention the link in the description and then we'll talk about some clinical features of open bite along with their causes and then finally we'll move on towards our main objective of, the, of this video that is how we will manage the correction and achieve a normal occlusion and eliminating open bite. So let's get started. Now open bite is when there is no vertical overlap between the teeth. It can be either anterior or posterior. By anterior we simply mean that these anterior teeth they are associated with open bite as you can see in this picture there is no vertical overlap between the anterior tooth. Also diagrammatically you can also see this. There is no vertical overlap between the anterior teeth. Normally there is some overlap between these uh, teeth. Posteriorly in this picture you can see how there is no uh, overlap between the posterior teeth because in, when in normal occlusion they are occluded. There is overlap between them. Between them and in this case there is no vertical overlap so this is known as posterior open bite we have anterior open bite and then we have posterior open bite now there are different types of open bite so for our understanding and our simplicity we normally divide it into two types we firstly we have anterior and posterior open bite that we have discussed previously and the second way of classifying open bite is skeletal or dental open bite. By skeletal open bite, we simply mean that there is something wrong with either the maxilla, mandible or both of them at the same time. And by dental open bite, we simply mean that maxilla and mandible are alright, but there is something wrong with the teeth, how they are in occlusion, which is leading to open bite. Now talking about some clinical features, there is some difference in clinical features if the open bite is associated with skeletal anomaly or dental anomaly. But generally some features that we see as you can see in this picture is that the, there is increase in lower anterior facial height. You can see here how the anterior facial height of the lower part of the face is increased in this case of open bite. Also there is decrease in the upper anterior facial height. You can see over here in these two pictures and sometimes it's associated with short upper lip because sometimes the upper incisors are proclined which leads to short upper lip and the face is generally long and narrow as you can see in this picture and obviously we can see some open bite and in this case sometimes there is tendency to develop class 2 malocclusion in, th in that case the maxilla is ahead of the mandible so there is a tendency to develop class 2 malocclusion and there is crowding there can be may or may not be crowding in the lower arch and if there is only dental anomaly associated that is leading to open bite then we can see clinically there is an open bite the upper incisors or the lower incisors they can be proclined and the maxillary arch is narrow and the narrowing of the maxillary arch is mainly associated with habits that are developed by the young child that leads to open bite for example thumb sucking and, and tongue thrusting that we will discuss shortly now talking about some main causes of open bite firstly there is thumb sucking now thumb sucking basically leads to open bite because it tends to hinder the eruption of the incisor so for example if you are to draw an incisor here uh, this is a lower incisor now there is a, some tendency over here because thumb is over here so eruption of these two teeth is disrupted which leads to open bite. Tongue thrust. Tongue thrust also uh, takes place in similar manner which prevents the eruption of the teeth either anteriorly or posteriorly leading to open bite. Now airway obstruction is a less common cause it's mainly associated because there is some nasopharyngeal obstruction because normally we breathe through our nose so if there is some obstruction associated with our nose then the patient tends to breathe through his or her mouth now when they breathe through their mouth there is narrowing of the maxillary arch 
which can lead to development of anterior or posterior open bite. Some growth abnormalities are also present either associated with maxilla or mandible that lead to open bite and finally some cleft lip and palate patients that tend to develop open bite. Now talking about the main objective of our video the treatment of open bite. Now patient mainly seek treatment of open bite mainly due to two reasons either it can be aesthetics or it can be due to mastication mostly it's due to mastication because since there is no vertical overlap between the teeth it doesn't look very nice to the patient and secondly sometimes mastication also can be associated with open bite and patients tend to seek treatment due to mastication because the incising action of the teeth cannot occur or even posteriorly the mass there is some problem with mastication when the patient eats food so the, the two reasons for treatment are aesthetics and mastication. Now, when a young child visits a dental clinic or an OPD, the first thing that you have to do is ask for habits. Now, habits which we have discussed previously are thumb sucking and, and tongue thrusting mainly. So, the first part of treatment should be in young children is to stop these habits. Now, these habits can be stopped if for example, we implement behavioral methods and that mainly means that you have to disrupt that behavior by simply using positive reinforcement by re rewarding your child or sometimes punishment. But punishment method is not that useful as compared to positive re reinforcements. Secondly, we can also use habit breakers such as fixed or removable appliances. Now, Thumb sucking and tongue thrusting habits as we have discussed previously they prevent the normal eruption of these teeth that leads to open bite. Now in if the open bite occurs in the deciduous dentition now if you stop this habit over here as the permanent teeth erupt the open bite will be corrected because in the deciduous teeth you have corrected that habit so that habit won't be repeated in permanent teeth so when this habit is not repeated in the permanent teeth that leads to correction of open bite and there is no open bite. So as you can see in this picture this is a young child probably having deciduous teeth and if you correct this habit it won't lead to open bite and it will be corrected. Now the second part of the treatment is using orthodontic treatment. Now orthodontic treatment mainly consists of using headgears, braces, elastic and sometimes transpeletal arch. So let's discuss about it. Now orthodontic treatment is mainly indicated for patients that are residing in mild to moderate categories. Now firstly we can use fixed braces in this patient as you can see in this picture fixed braces are used so that the malocclusion and the abnormal positions of this teeth are corrected along with elastics. Now what are the purpose of elastics? Elastics basically are used to extrude the upper and lower incisors. As you can see the elastics are pulling these teeth down and also these lower teeth up so thereby correcting the open bite or at least reducing the open bite. Now secondly a transpeletal arch can be used as we can see over this here picture and thirdly reverse pull headgear is used as you can see in this picture. This headgear is pulling in the reverse direction. Now, now both the reverse pull headgear and the transpeletal arch basically limit the vertical movement of maxillary molars. Now when the uh, vertical movement of these maxillary molars is limited it leads to reduction in open bite or at least prevents further worsening of the overbite because if more molars will erupt it will lead to increase in anterior open bite and this is what we have to prevent in order to correct the open bite. And finally using of reverse pull headgear also prevents the distal movement of the teeth which further also worsens the open bite so distal movement is also prevented when reverse pull headgear is used. Now the third part of treatment is basically when the incisors are proclined. As you can see over here in this diagram, this with blue, these are the incisors that are proclined. So if by using orthodontic treatment or any fixed appliance or removal appliance, the incisors are moved back in their uh, normal position, you can see the open bite is eliminated or reduced. 
basically we use different treatment modalities to reduce the open bite and by using the different modalities we finally achieve elimination of the open bite so if the incisors are proclined it can be moved back into their original position or normal occlusion either to reduce or eliminate the open bite now previously we have seen how a reverse pull headgear looks like and now we will discuss the next part of treatment that is how reverse pull headgear actually works now the basic function of reverse pull headgear is basically to reduce the vertical eruption of upper molars now when the vertical movement of the upper molar is reduced or eliminated by the use of reverse pull headgear now you can see over here the anterior open bite is reduced or at least the worsening of it is prevented when a reverse pull headgear is used because the vertical eruption of the upper molars is prevented because if it continues to erupt this distance will increase and it will worsen the open bite now secondly this reverse pull headgear can also be used in combination with functional appliances which can be either fixed or removable and as i have told you before different treatment modalities are used in combination to achieve the elimination of open bite next although not very frequently used but chin cup therapy can also be used now the main purpose of chin cup therapy is basically to limit the excessive vertical growth of the patient's maxilla because when the vertical growth will reduce the open bite will reduce so that is the main purpose of chin cup therapy but the main drawback that is associated with chin cup therapy is poor patient compliance now if in uh, adolescent patient or young patients or very very small patients if the open bite is not corrected now in adults surgery is then indicated because now the growth has finished and you cannot alter the growth so surgery is the main indication when an adult patient comes for an open bite correction now surgery is most of the times combined with orthodontic treatment the patient has started on orthodontic treatment by correction of this teeth position and when the orthodontic treatment is complete then surgery is performed in these patients and now all one more thing surgery cannot be and should not be performed in a patient who is in a growing age because if you perform a surgery and the patient is growing and when you have done the surgery it will keep on growing and there is a chance of relapse in that patient so you should not do surgery when a patient is in a growing stage the growth has to be stopped at a particular age and then surgery will be performed now in this case you can see surgery can be either segmental when a certain segment of either mandible or maxilla is removed or the whole bone can be altered in this picture you can see how a part of maxillary bone is removed and when it is removed maxilla move upwards along with mandible and you can see how open bite is reduced or eliminated to say the least now lastly talking about how to prevent relapse because there are tendency towards relapse because if for example the cause of open bite is skeletal the severe the cause of skeletal open bite the poorer will be the prognosis so you have to view the patient if the patient is a growing age and you correct the open bite there is a chance as the patient is growing the open bite will relapse so how you can prevent the relapse of this open bite is to prevent the eruption of this posterior because if because as the patient is growing the posterior will continue to erupt and if they continue to erupt the open bite will occur again so you have to prevent the eruption of the posterior and secondly the vertical growth of the maxilla has also to be stopped or at least reduced because when you reduce it the open bite will not occur, occur again if it's corrected properly and the vertical growth can be stopped by the use of reverse pull headgear as we have discussed before and activators and bionators will also be used or can be used to correct or at least prevent the relapse of the open bite so that was all about what is an open bite causes clinical features and finally we concluded our video by discussing the treatment modalities that are available for the correction of open bite i hope this video was useful for you and you did learn how an open bite can be corrected so if you like this video please like share and subscribe and press the bell icon and 
we'll see you soon in our further videos so take care and thank you for watching this video